Hi guys, welcome to the allotment on a Monday afternoon. Uh, it stopped raining for the moment, so I thought I'd just get the, the camera out and, um, oh yes, let's do some filming. But today is the day. Today is the day I'm going to sow some seed, finally. We're just going to go through the motions today. I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to fill the bottom of my cold frame with um, some horticultural grit. And yeah, I'm going to do some, well basically I'm going to make up my own seed compost as well. I've got some seed compost, I've got some sand, um, and I've got some loam, um, which is actually from the soil uh, in this allotment. So I'm just going to bulk it out because it can be quite expensive. And uh, fill, my, uh, fill the cold frame, and yeah, just go from there. So uh, while it's not raining, let's have a go. So I'm just going to fill the bottom of uh, my cold frame with horticultural grit. Um, that was the advice that I got from a few people to uh, keep the slugs and snails um, out of the frame. If they want to get in, they're gonna get in. Uh, I can't, I can't fight nature like that. They're too, they're too, they're too clever. So, uh, uh, but I'll give it a go. I'll give it my best shot. Um, I'll get my spuds in today. Hopefully as well, this will act like a little anchor as well. Because I haven't quite figured out how to secure it yet. But I will, eventually. Give me a bit of time. Job one done. Easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to just dig out uh, some loam uh, from this compost bin. Uh, which was, I gather the soil from the, the, the allotment anyway. So which will help any seedlings that I germinate because they'll be already used to the soil that I have because I'm already integrating it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to shovel out clumps into one, into one truck. I'm going to riddle it um, and then just pick out all the bits. I might get, I might get a few um, unwanted seeds in there, but that's okay. Um, I can deal with that. And yeah, just uh, bulk out my seed corners. Let me just show you. So this is pre-riddled. There's a lot of debris in here. So uh, we'll see what this looks like afterwards. Oh, got to get comfy. We're riddling like an old prospector from the wild west. nicer if this was a bit drier but oh well I am producing some lovely loamy soil end product very light loamy good soil and uh, now that mixed in with a bag of um, peat free seed compost and some sharp sand, I've got a bulk of seed compost. Happy days. Give her a stir. Just whatever you, whatever you can use that you already have to one save yourself a bit of money 
it's, uh, it's, always, it's, always, it's always a good feeling when you use materials that you've prepared. So there's a, good, there's a nice feeling to it. Have a masterclass in science you see then shall we? A masterclass. Who do I think I am? So we just had a bit of a a bit of a storm. I had to batter down the hatches and hide in the shed for five minutes. Um, but it seems to have stopped now, so um, let's get these spuds in, shall we? Now this bed, um, I feel like it's the one that is least broken up. So me actually having these potatoes in here, um, when it comes to cropping, they'll, um, they'll break up the soil quite nicely, hopefully. That's the, that's the theory. So I got my swifts going in first. variety of uh, cucumber that was uh, gifted to me from uh, a family in Cyprus. Oh, something, before I put the seed trays in here, um, I had to inspect them. I had some stowaway slugs, <laughs> like underneath the pots, in the gaps and the grooves. So always, always check your seed pot, your, 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 your trays before you uh, put them into the cold frame because uh, they would be little stowaways and as soon as any of this started to germinate they would just would have been slug food instantly. I'm gonna sow one in one of these little pots about a centimetre in one and a half centimetres down just to uh, just to germinate them. These pots are quite small um, but that's all I got. This is all I've got. So, you can see, popping them in, and I always try what I was told. I always try and pop the seeds in on its side instead of laying it flat. So if you lay it flat, the water can sit on it and it could rot the seeds. So, uh, ooh, so always. Try and pop it in side face. A little dust in the compost on the top. Firm it down. There you go. There's one. Done. why I wish I had a possum bench. I'm gonna have a bad back by the end of this. Next, let's go 
some celery. This is Lapham self blanching celery. Do I understand the process of blanching properly? No. So, I think that's something I might have to look into. Might move this into the shed, you know. Seed sown operation. Yeah. Give some a minute. See, look at that. The second I've set myself up in the shed, it is blue skies. So it was all right kerfuffle getting in here. So uh, we're staying in here for now. Sorry. Okay, so the cucumber's been sown. Amazing. Planted that one a little bit deeper. It's about 1.5 centimeters in. This one uh, was the celery, and it only needed a, a light scattering of compost over the top because the seeds are so funny. Um, they haven't got that much energy stored in the seed to put on a lot of growth so they need to be sown uh, at the top. Next I'm going to sow, well, let's get some cauliflower on the go shall we? And a lot of things that I'm um, sowing now um, I'm probably going to end up with more space um, for more of them so I'll just do successional sowing. So once all of this has germinated and um, my seed trays are, are free again, then I'll just uh, have another go. Again, these cauliflower seeds are quite small. But they're easy to handle. I'm just going to put one in each pot and just cut the lower back. Next, we've got uh, some spring April cabbage. Increase my chances of germination. Next, we've got broccoli, calabrese, and I, I absolutely butcher any pronunciation of uh, <laughs> of vegetables and plant, just plants in general. I just butcher the names. Uh, and these are bell star. These are one, these are an F1 hybrids. If I had a potting bench, I would I would literally just put this tray on top of it, on top on top of the potting bench, and I would just dump all the compost over, and just with, uh, with something long and flat, and I would just rake it uh, level, because doing these all individually is such a waste of time. Uh, that's just, and especially when you're sowing a lot of seed, it doesn't help. So, artichokes. Imperial star. And hopefully, uh, I'll be able to crop from these every year. Fingers crossed. We don't get many seeds in this one. But these seeds are quite cool. Can you see? Oh. <laughs> and they got in my seed tin. It's the last time I try and show you guys anything. Next, we've got a sweet corn lark. Now I'm going to sow these in the grids. Yeah, because you have to sow these in grids because they they're wind pollinated. The tray will allow it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's my first tray. So brilliant. I haven't got a case for these ones. But these, I'll show you. These are Kelvin Kelvin Wonders, um, and um, I stole these from work. But I was given, I was given them. Just 
much easier. Or you can just throw compost on top. You don't have to be so fussy. So we've got bunyard ex exhibition. Broad beans. Python French climbing. And then Pantheon. This is my dibba. Uh, my boss carved it for me out of English U. It's a lovely little tour. And then I've got a couple varieties of pumpkin that I'm just going to sow. If anyone can tell me what this is. Very interesting. It is bright lights. There's rainbow char. So another variety of Swiss chard. Just more of a, a regular sort. So these are Brussels sprouts, brilliant F1. Duck. <laughs> Just picked up this packet and I was like, where are all my seeds? <laughs> They're in here. Radishes, some long radishes, these are interesting. I haven't seen anything like this before. All right, so in here, I'll sow the lettuce. Yeah, I'll sow lettuce, lettuces, and I'll get some tomatoes in here just to keep. Happy. I'm not a fan of tomatoes. I love growing them. They're such an interesting plant to grow. There's so much care goes into them. And if you do it right, oh, it's very satisfying. Oh, I didn't do my plant label. Always do your plant label first. Because otherwise, Otherwise, you forget what's sown where. Got all my <laughs> my flowers, all my perennial flowers. Oh my God, that's absolute belter art oh, selection. I think this is. I think this is why I want to know a lot, really. Uh, so I could grow flowers. <laughs> oh, I just want to do it all now. Salvias, yarrow. I can't sow them all now, can I? <laughs> okay. Yarrow, salvia, short list. Delphiniums, short listed. Sweet peas. I will do three varieties for now. Lupins. Uh, we'll do a poppy. We'll do, we'll go for the classic, Rebecca. Sunflowers. Let's get a bit of Cosmos on the go. And Nigella, that's what I'm gonna do today. So this is an incense mix, twilight mix, and then summer sizzle. So I'm just gonna split this tray up into four. Nigella and half Delphinium. I'm gonna go with the salvia blaze of fire. What about changing climate? Uh, our salvias at work uh, last year did so well and they were still going all the way up until I think it was 
It must have been almost no, like November time. So it was just so warm. And I took some cuttings um, of some at work. And, um, well, I took six cuttings and three of them survived, which um, it's not bad going ratio wise. Go. One full cold frame. I'm just gonna give everything a water um, and then I'm gonna do my off the grid heating and I'll show you. Okay, so this is my heating system. One larger terracotta pot. And then a smaller terracotta pot underneath that with a little block on top. And then I got two candles on some crocs, just so that the candles, oxygen comes underneath tray, the candles heat up the initial terracotta pot, you can see the, the lights on in there, yeah, so we cover that hole just to trap the heat there, and then that, when that terracotta pot gets hot enough, it will then radiate the heat to this pot, ta-da! And that should hopefully keep my seed trays and cold frame a bit warmer because um, even though there's no frost on the horizon, but we're still going to be getting down to like four, three degrees in the night time. So uh, I think this will help the germination process. Well, hey, a lot of sowing got done today and the potatoes. So finally, we're gonna have some green in the beds, hopefully. To be fair though, I think if there was an award for the best kept soil, well, I don't think I'd win that competition either, but uh, <laughs> I'm pretty good at keeping looking after the soil. So that's it for today. Um, I suppose now that I've sown my seed, I'm going to have to be down here every day. <laughs> well, I've got to make sure they don't dry out, obviously. Um, and, um, but yeah, I think either just pop over here after work or come over first thing in the morning on my way to work. Who knows? But, until next time, have a good day. <laughs>